Hello, beautiful people of the internet. How are you doing today? My name is Jackie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So once again, the year is almost over and that means it's time to talk about my best, worst, and most disappointing reads of the year. This is pretty self-explanatory. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the three best books I read in 2021, the three worst books, and also the three most disappointing books. Basically, when I say most disappointing, it's a book that I didn't dislike as much as the worst books I read, just ones that didn't meet the expectations that I had for them or let me down in some kind of way. So let's get started with the number three best book. Okay, so I'm kind of starting off this video breaking my own rules because when I was thinking about the best books that I read this year, I really had a hard time narrowing it down to just three. So to start off this video, I'm going to be talking about two different books that I loved for different reasons. I couldn't decide which one to put on this list and which one to take off. So why not spread the love around and talk about them both? Tied for number three best, I have A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn and Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. Two books that I gave five stars and absolutely loved for very different reasons. First off, I acknowledge that my love for A Curious Beginning might just be entirely personal because this book hits so many of the oddly specific things that I personally love. This is the first in a series of Victorian set mysteries following Veronica, a independent-minded Victorian lady adventuress who ends up solving crimes with her brooding colleague Stoker. And I absolutely love the characters in this series. So far I've read the first two books and Veronica and Stoker's chemistry is off the charts. I totally ship these two together and I think Deanna Rayborn does an amazing job at writing their dialogue. They have such a natural repartee between the two of them that I just absolutely adore. The reason that I loved these first two books so much is because I just love the characters and their relationship. Deanna Rayborn did an amazing job at getting me to be invested in this relationship. I love their interactions and I have a particular fondness for couples who bicker. I think that she does an amazing job writing witty banter so I'm looking forward to reading the rest of these books. I want these two to be together so bad you guys. <laughs> so bad. Now, Dark Matter by Blake Crouch is sort of the opposite of A Curious Beginning in that A Curious Beginning hits a lot of specific things that I like in books. And Dark Matter is a book that I probably never would have picked up had I not heard so much praise about it on booktube because this book is a sort of sci-fi thriller and sci-fi is a genre that I do not particularly gravitate towards usually. But man, am I so glad that I read this book because it was so well done. This book follows a professor named Jason and one night he is attacked and sent into a different reality where he has been able to achieve success in his field. However, his wife is not his wife and his son is not his son. So he needs to figure out how he can get back to his old life and the family that he loves. Not only did this book totally mess with my head and make me feel a really palpable sense of anxiety, but I also totally felt the character's emotions. I think at one point I actually teared up, which does not happen to me frequently and I was not expecting at all when I picked up this book. I was on the edge of my seat waiting to see what was going to happen next and I really felt for Jason and I wanted him to get his family back. As different as A Curious Beginning and Dark Matter were, I think one thing they do have in common is that I genuinely 
cared about the characters in these books and that in my opinion is a sign of a great story when the writer can make you feel so invested in the lives of these fictional people as if they were real. Next, the number three worst book I read in 2021. Now, I know those of you who watch my channel regularly are probably expecting to see Pamela by Samuel Richardson on this worst list. I made an entire video complaining about this book and how problematic it is. I will link that in the card. Once again, always forget which side the card is on. However, we've picked on Pamela enough, you guys. And to be honest, in terms of how hard it was to get through, I don't even think Pamela was necessarily the worst book that I read in that specific class. Because let me tell you, I had a much harder time getting through Tristram Shandy by Lauren Stern. And had this not been required reading, I definitely wouldn't have finished it. Is Pamela incredibly offensive by modern standards? Yes, but I firmly believe that had Pamela ended differently, it could have been a good book. But Tristram Shandy literally has no plot. It is complete nonsense. I don't know how to describe this book to you guys. And Tristram Shandy is not meant to be a conventional narrative. It's supposed to be nonsensical and have tangents. But that being said, I didn't enjoy this book at all. I think there definitely is an audience for it and there are people who will appreciate it, but me personally, I would never have read this entire thing if it wasn't required. And I really did not enjoy myself at all reading it. The characters were not developed. There was no coherent plot. The humor did not land with me. I think it included a lot of body sexual jokes, which just no thanks. So are there some people who might like this book? Yeah, but I personally did not enjoy any of it. At least Pamela wasn't 100% painful. There were parts of it that were painful. But Tristram Shandy, I really just, based on my personal taste, I didn't enjoy it at all. <laughs> so in my opinion, it was actually worse to read. Now, the number three most disappointing book that I read was Valperga by Mary Shelley. This is a very obscure novel. I think it has less than a thousand Goodreads ratings, but personally, I love Mary Shelley. Frankenstein is one of my favorite books, and I also just think Mary Shelley herself was a really interesting person. So this book let me down because it's just not nearly as good as Frankenstein, in my opinion, and a lot of it was extremely boring. This book is set in Renaissance, I believe, era Italy, and it follows Castruccio, who is the Prince of Lucca, and I think this book would have been so much more interesting if Castruccio wasn't the main character, because I didn't find him likable or interesting. Granted, I don't think he was meant to be likable, but I was so much more interested in the storylines of the female characters, Euthanasia and Beatrice. Yes, her name is spelled exactly like the word euthanasia. I'm not joking. <laughs> Had this entire book been about Beatrice, who just has such an interesting life story, God, could have been a great book. Unfortunately, the main character of this book was one of the least interesting people in it, in my opinion, and that's what made it so disappointing. The number two best book I read was A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Hosseini. God, this book was so beautiful and tragic. Overall, this book made me feel genuine emotions and really moved me. I cried real tears reading this and not just like a little tear, like full on tears. My eyes were so blurred by tears. I had to take a minute because I couldn't see the page anymore. This novel takes place in Afghanistan over the period of several decades, and it mainly follows two women, Miriam and Layla, 
both of whom I loved as characters and I really felt for so much. I cared about them and I wanted to see them escape their circumstances. Once again, I feel like the characters in this book were just so beautifully drawn and I felt their joys, I felt their sorrows. I think Khaled Husseini has such a gift for making emotion come across in his writing. I definitely have to reread A Kite Runner at some point because I read that for a required reading when I was a freshman in high school and I definitely think rereading it I will have a better memory of what happened first of all and also I might be able to appreciate it more now that I'm over the age of 14. But back to A Thousand Splendid Sons, I would definitely recommend this book if you're looking for a really powerful, moving story that has some really amazing central characters and just a heartbreaking plot. It was so impactful and exceptionally well-written. The number two worst book I read, this is a controversial one, but I absolutely hated Normal People by Sally Rooney. I know, I know, I know, before you come at me with the pitchforks, I know that this book is very popular, so if you love this book, hey, I'm happy for you. It's always cool when somebody finds something that they love, and I respect that a bunch of people like this book. However, I personally did not like it at all, and that's just my personal opinion. I read this for my office book club, and the opinions were really split down the middle. There were some people who loved this book and others, like me, who hated it, so I think this is just one of those divisive books. You might love it, you might hate it. It depends on your personal taste as a reader. This book follows two Irish teenagers, Connell and Marianne, and their relationship over a several year long period throughout the end of high school and throughout their studies at Trinity College. And I really just didn't care about Connell and Marianne that much. And it was so annoying because like their relationship, they kept having relationship issues because the two of them are just completely incapable of communicating their emotions to each other. There were so many times when a conflict could have entirely been avoided if one of them just opened their mouth and said what they were feeling. And the miscommunication trope is one of my least favorite tropes in fiction. I just find it aggravating. It's a really annoying tactic writers use to keep a couple apart for the sake of drama, and I can't stand it. There was also a really weird part of the book where Maryam has an eating disorder and then Sally Rooney like never brings it up again, which was questionable. Overall, I just felt like this book was trying too hard to sound profound and it got on my nerves. I really didn't care about what was happening in this book and honestly, had it not been for book club, again, would have DNF'd this book. I did not like it from the very first chapter. Personally, I don't like it at all. But that's just me. You do you. Ugh, I am just trying to get controversy in this video, I guess. But I'm just being honest about my personal opinions, okay? And I know some people are gonna be unhappy because the number two most disappointing book that I read in 2021 was The Night Swim by Megan Golden. This is an insanely popular mystery thriller on Booktube that deals with a rape trial in a seaside town. The main character, Rachel, has a podcast and she decides that she's going to cover this trial for her current season of her podcast. And she's also contacted by a young woman named Hannah whose sister died mysteriously many years ago and it was never solved. So many people love this book. Personally, it was like a two or three star for me. It just didn't live up to the hype. I've seen a lot of people say that they love Rachel as a main character, but personally, I thought she was so bland and underdeveloped and also not a really good podcaster. I really like listening to true crime YouTube videos and podcasts, and personally, I don't think 
I would continue listening to Rachel's podcast because, well, first of all, she gives the shortest podcast episodes ever. And also, a lot of times she interjects her own opinions, but doesn't specify that they're her own opinions. She keeps talking about how she's impartial, but she's really not. And I'm not saying that I didn't agree with her opinions, but it's just kind of graded on me that she held herself up as this beacon of impartiality when she's not. She's totally infusing her own biases into the podcast. Also, I don't know, but the second the killer first appeared on the page, I knew instantly, oh yeah, this is the person who murdered Hannah's sister. And I was right. I know so many people said that they were surprised by this reveal, and I understand why you would be, but I don't know. For some reason, I just saw it coming a mile away. I just had a feeling, I guess. I mean, hey, if I was the one who wrote this book, I probably would have used the same twist that she did, honestly. It's not a bad idea. I think maybe this was just a case of a book being overhyped. Maybe my expectations were too high. After I read this book, I really wanted to know if it was just me because I'd never seen a poor review of this book. So my mom actually also read this book and she said she really enjoyed it. So guess I'm out on an island here. I don't know. Just my opinion. Not a terrible book, but not worth the hype. Next up, the number one best book I read in 2021. I'm not gonna say too much about this because you all know that I love this story, but coming in at number one, it's Little Women. When I was a child, I had an illustrated edition of Little Women that was rewritten to have more child-friendly language, I guess, and also cut out some of the side plots. And I absolutely adored that book. Joe March's my childhood hero, along with Elizabeth Bennet, and I wanted to be like her when I grew up. So this year I finally read the full unabridged classic, and it was glorious. I have just had a lifelong love for this story. I've always loved Joe March, though I have to say I have a new appreciation for Amy. I kind of feel like she's low-key a little bit hilarious and I think she deserves more love. Also, I know some people don't like the ending, in particular who ends up with who, but personally I like it. I think everything worked out like it should have. I know I said like nine months ago that I was gonna make a video comparing all the different adaptations of Little Women, and I'm still going to. It's just gonna take a lot of time because I have to rewatch all the adaptations, take notes, film the video. It's gonna take a long time and I've been procrastinating it. It's still coming, guys. I'm sorry it's taking me so long. I'm the worst, I know. <laughs> Speaking of the worst, <laughs> what a transition. The number one worst book I read in 2021 was The Wife Who Knew Too Much by Michelle Campbell. I made an entire video complaining about this book, which I will link in the card. And in that video, I give a beat by beat plot summary talking about how bad this book is and my many issues with it. Please go watch that video if you haven't and <laughs> Please, just please watch it because otherwise, like, I just completely wasted my time reading this book. At least if you watch the video and, like, give it a thumbs up or something, something positive came out of this experience. <laughs> I feel so bad. I hope Michelle Campbell never, ever finds my YouTube channel. I'm sure she's a nice person. I just hated this book. <laughs> I'm sorry, Michelle Campbell. <laughs> I did not like the way this book was written. Michelle Campbell was in the law before becoming a writer, and I think you can tell that she doesn't have a creative writing experience because she really makes a lot of rookie level writing mistakes that they beat out of you in college writing classes. The main character made a lot of dumb decisions, and her love interest sucked. I hated his guts. Overall, just a very disappointing book with not many bright spots. That's why I have it number one worst out of all the books I read this year. And we're gonna end this video with another hot take from me. The number one 
most disappointing book I read in 2021 was If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. I wanted to read this book because I see it all over Tumblr all the time. I've seen positive reviews for it on booktube as well. And basically this is a dark academia book that follows a bunch of Shakespearean theater students. And we start off the book with one of those students, Oliver, getting out of prison where he has been wrongfully jailed for the murder of one of his classmates. And then we look back to see what actually happened. I was expecting to like this book a lot, especially given how hyped it was, but hot take, I really didn't think it was that good. The first time I attempted to read this book, I DNF'd it because the characters are quoting Shakespeare to each other constantly. It's like every other line of dialogue is somebody flawlessly quoting a line of Shakespeare, and I found it so pretentious and annoying. I love Shakespeare too, but guys, like, talk like a normal human being, okay? <laughs> Personally, I didn't find a characters that compelling. The murder victim was cartoonishly, one-dimensionally evil. Overall, I feel like this book just did not at all live up to the expectations I had for it. Considering this book is so hyped, I was expecting a little bit more depth. I didn't connect with any of the characters or their relationships at all. If you're looking for a dark academia book, read The Secret History by Donna Tartt instead, honestly. <laughs> So those are the best, worst, and most disappointing books I read in 2021. I hope you don't hate me now. I know I had a lot of unpopular opinions in this video, but hopefully you enjoyed watching it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. I post new videos every single Wednesday. My social media links are down below if you want to follow me on Tumblr, Instagram, or be my friend on Goodreads. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a tremendous rest of your day. Bye, and I'll see you next time.